Here's the latest project. This is a Gretz Super 171W from 1953 54. And um, just received it. Have no idea what state it's in. So we'll investigate together and see what we have to do to this baby. I do like the Gretz. This is the third or fourth one I've done, or I'm going to do. Um, they're not quite up there with the Sabers, but um, they're in line with the Telefunkens and Grundechs and so on. So German radio, obviously. It has FM, short wave, medium wave and long wave, plus a pickup input. This one comes with, uh, that's the volume control there. And uh, it comes with a pre-selected tone section on the left there. It then has all the buttons seem to be fine except for the usual dirt. That's to be expected. This one, the volume is turning. Yep. And this switch only moves two positions. So there's something wrong with that there. We have our indicator for our base. Yep. That's our base indicator. Moving across. There's our treble. That there is the treble indicator, which is fine. We have our tuning. Seems, oh, there we go. That is the ferrite antenna rotator. I presume that takes the ferrite antenna out of circuit. That is our tuning. Uh, let's see if we have, where is the guy? Oh dear. Oh, it's there. There's our tuning indicator. So the string is fine, which is great. Now, visually, it's not in bad shape. The magic eye, no idea if that's still bright or not. Grill cloth is great. The um, actual cabinet has seen a few wars, a few scratches on there. They do seem to be on the surface only. So hopefully I can get away with uh, doing to this one what I did to the previous one, which is just the lacquer needs to be redone. There is a trim that should go on there, which is gone. A metal trim, which we can see on this side. And that is loose there, so that's going to need some repair. That goes over the top. There you go. This thing has got the speakers just on the front, so nothing on the side there. So let's turn this around and open up the back and see what we've got. All right, the back's got a few scratches on here, or tears but nothing serious. This thing opens up very simply. You just turn that in there. Yep, there we go. Just before we do that, down here we've got the antenna connectors. There are four points. The two on the top are for the uh, external FM dipole. I presume there's an internal antenna. We'll see in a minute. The bottom one is for AM, Earth and Antenna. We have a connector here for a pickup. And then we have the external 5 ohm speaker if you want to put it in there. There's our glass paneled, plastic paneled voltage selector on the inside. So let's take this out to see what we've got. And here we have it. Not too bad, actually. Not too bad at all. Let's have a closer look. The dials all seem to be there. There's the ferrite antenna that rotates. There is an internal antenna, FM internal antenna, that goes... Okay, yeah, 
that should come out and then you can plug it in there or alternatively you use the external one a little bit of rust on the cabinet not much it looks pretty clean actually speaker looks great this is a, quite a nice speaker actually there's a funny they've wound this around here I don't know if that's just to shorten the lead or if it serves a purpose we'll find out bar transformer it's set to 220 I'll be setting it to 240 here two fuses that black thing there will be our rectifier it's an AEG Slim rectifier we'll have to see how that does the uh, can capacitors filter caps no idea what that's like at the moment it could be dried out it could be fine maybe we can reform it output transformer some of those dreaded capacitors on there here's our FM section and then at the top we have a tweeter this is electrostatic tweeter there's our magic eye right so first steps first let's get this out of the cabinet and we can have a look underneath I was just trying to figure out what the best way was to get this out of the cabinet and um, I've decided to leave the speakers exactly where they are both speakers the tuning eye just comes out very simply you just unscrew this connector and there's the magic eye so that that's easy enough but the speakers if I try and disconnect at the top it'll be a mess so what I'm going to do is I'm going to desolder these four wires down here and I guess this video is more for my reference just to see where they go we have a thick green and thicker or thicker green and thicker black going to the speaker over there and we've got two thin wires red and black going to the electrostatic tweeter those guys wind around in a funny way just to I think basically to get some of the wire out of the way I don't believe that winding serves any purpose although who knows and then there are the four connectors over here onto the top of the power transformer of the output transformer so I'm just going to record or list draw out where these wires go and I'm going to desolder them so I can remove the uh, radio out of the cabinet and then I'll do my usual thing which is to connect um, a pluggable system onto the output transformer for the main speaker the electrostatic tweeter does not need to be connected for repair and testing and I'll be able to work with this thing outside the cabinet without bothering with wires running around back to the speakers so time to get on so here we have the wires desoldered and um, what I did to avoid messing this up, which could be very, very serious, is I've just drawn that top plate there and labeled it. So I know exactly where they go back. And I also know now where to connect the speaker to. It'll be this thick black and the thick green, because those are the two that go to the main speaker. Right, time to get this out of here. Here we have the empty inside. Just have a quick look. Just uh, the usual dust and fluff and whatever it is that accumulates in these things. No serious damage. This uh, plate here is part of the antenna, part of the dipole, the FM dipole, which comes off there. It goes round as well. And down that bottom, we have some markings on here not sure what those are sometimes we see a date on these things uh, can't see it just yet 
Usually we see a date. I'd like to see what date this thing was made. No joy so far. All right. Well, uh, whatever that means. There's a date there, I think, but I can't read it. Anyway, this radio is 53, 54, so it'll be something like that. This bottom section comes out easy enough, just slides off the top there. And we, we can see the screws that are holding the chassis inside the cabinet. And you notice that there's two metal springs over here, one there and one there. And those two make contact with this metallized bottom sheet. So this is obviously for uh, noise reduction and those two springs will then make contact and earth the bottom. And I have to remember now when I put it back to make sure that those are in place. So this video will serve as a reminder. So I've got it out of the cabinet and uh, the chassis is now ready for the, it's on the operating table, ready for surgery. Connected it up to that jigger mine so that I can rotate it and flip it and not break anything. And let's see what we've got inside. Well, the usual capacitors need to be changed. A little bit of dust, not much. This thing's pretty clean. Quite a bit of dust on there. Whoa. That looks really grimy. And this is an open back pot as well. So a lot of crap's gone in there. That's just dusting and cleaning with uh, isopropylic alcohol. Here's the other tone pot, also open back. The bottom we've got the volume pot, which is a closed one. Good. Um, here we have the, the power switch, which I presume, yep. Any of these activated and then that one, the off switch switches it off. All these caps will be tested now that I've got the capacitance leakage tester. Some of them may not have to come out. If I recall correctly, the Gretz resistors were always very good. I hope this one stays true to form. In some of the other Gretz radios that I've restored, the resistors were accurate to less than 1% even after all these years. The capacitors were a different story. Our transformer has all the tone caps and resistors down there. That there, 50 microfarad, 12, 15 volt. That'll be the cathode bypass cap for the um, power tube, which is an EL84. The tubes on this one are pretty standard with uh, the ones I found on other tube radios of the era. So it shouldn't be a problem. There's adjustable pot there. I don't know what that's for. that is for. I haven't looked at the schematic yet. That'll be the first tube and it's got a screen between the one section and the other. I think it's an ECH81. We'll see. That looks like, yeah, that looks like the top of the FM section or the bottom of the FM section over there more screening involved. I really do hope this thing doesn't come with the same problems that the previous one did. In the previous radio, that low opta, I had both oscillators on the blink, both the uh, AM and the uh, FM oscillators weren't working. That was quite a challenge. This one looks quite simple. Huh. Deceptively so. And also, it seems to have quite a bit of space to work in. Not too crowded. In the previous video, I did a comparison. Um, 
I compared the underside of that radio with the underside of a Saba Freiburg 125. And on the Freiburg, you can't even fit an ant in there. It's very, very hard to work with, but these, these are pretty simple. The circuits are usually a little bit more complex than some of the American radios. The German radios went for some pretty strange uh, feedback systems so that the tone control was more based on the entire feedback than on the actual bleeding to, to ground or cutting the bass, which is what is usually done. It actually takes the feedback signal and uh, it's used to more or less taper the frequency response of the output rather than the frequency response of the input to the power valve. But we'll have a close look at the schematic on this one. I'm looking forward to this guy. And on this jig of mine, it's just basically two rectangles of wood, squares of wood. It's uh, You screw it onto the bottom where the chassis normally screws into the into the cabinet and then it's very easy to flip it around rest it you don't damage anything so first thing is to tie up that magic eye which is still flapping around in the wind here I'll have to tie it to the jig and then connect the speaker and then we start the usual checking power supply and so on so that's it for now the next one will be the start of the actual testing and restoration. See you soon.